Okay, time for chapters 29 through 33 of The Wild Robot. Chapter 29, The Beavers. Every day, the beavers swam along their dam, inspecting and repairing it. The wall of wood and mud allowed only a trickle of water to pass through, and it had turned a narrow stream into a wide pond that many animals now called home. Roz and Brightbill walked around the pond. They passed hundreds of chewed up tree stumps, proof that the beavers needed a constant supply of wood. And this gave Roz an idea. The robot swung her flattened hand, and the sounds of chopping wood echoed across the water. They were soon replaced by the sound of footsteps and shaking leaves as the robot carefully walked along the beaver dam with a gosling on her shoulder and a freshly cut tree in her hands. The beavers floated beside their, beside their lodge and stared at the bizarre sight with open mouths until Mr. Beaver slapped his broad tail on the water, which meant, stop right there. The robot stopped. Hello, beavers. My name is Roz, and this is Brightbill. Please do not be frightened. I am not dangerous. She held out the tree. I brought you a gift. I thought you, perhaps you could use it in your beautiful dam. No thanks, Mr. said Mr. Beaver. I have a strict policy never to accept gifts from monsters. Don't be ridiculous, interrupted Mrs. Beaver. We can't let a perfectly good birch go to waste. I am afraid I insist, said Mr. Beaver. Mrs. Beaver turned to her husband. Remember how you asked me to point out when you are being stubborn and rude? Well, you're being stubborn and rude. Then she turned back to Roz. Thank you, monster. If you would be so kind as to drop the tree in the water, we'll take it from there. I am not a monster. Roz tossed the tree like a twig. I am a robot. The tree smacked against the water and sent the beavers bobbing up and down. Just then, Brightbill started peeping. Mama, hungry. So Roz dropped a ball of grass into the nest. The gosling thinks, the gosling thinks you're his mother, came a quiet voice. It was Paddler, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver's son. His real mother is dead, said Roz, so I have adopted him. There was a brief silence. Then Paddler looked up at Roz and said, you're a very good robot to take care of Brightbill. Mr. Beaver sighed. Yes, yes, that's very good of you, Roz, but I don't understand what any of this has to do with us. My son and I need a home, and Loudwing said you would help us build one. Of course he did, Mr. Beaver muttered to himself. Ludwig gets me out of one lousy jam, and I spend the rest of my days doing her favors. Mr. Be Mrs. Beaver glared at her husband. Sorry, he said, realizing he was being stubborn and rude again. Stay right there, Roz. We need to have a family meeting. The three beavers slipped under the water, and a moment later, their muffled voices could be heard inside the lodge. The robot stood on the dam and patiently waited for her, with her son. Mama, Mama. Yes, Brightbill. I am trying to act like a good mother. A ripple in Mr. Beaver's head appeared above the water. If you bring us four more trees, good healthy ones, maybe I'll have time to help you and the gosling. That is wonderful, said the robot. We will be right back. Chapter 30, The Nest. I built my fair share of lodges over the years, Mr. Beaver stood at the water's edge, but I can't say I've ever built one for a robot and a gosling. So just what exactly do you need? We need a lodge big enough for us both, said Roz. It should be comfortable and safe, and it should be near the pond. How long do you plan on living in this lodge? I do not know. Then we'd better make sure it's strong and sturdy. The beaver stroked his whiskers as he thought. Do you plan on having friends over? The missus loves to entertain guests. I do not have any friends. No friends? Well, you seem pretty likable for a monster. I mean, a robot. But if, I, but if you want my advice, you should grow yourself a garden. The neighbors won't be able to resist fresh herbs and berries and flowers. You just wait and see. So we'll make sure there's a place for a garden, and we'll give your lodge some extra space for all the friends you'll be hosting. The beaver winked. You also need to find a way to keep your lodge comfortable when it's cold outside. Our lodge is heated by our own bodies, but I think we'll have to find another way to heat yours. 
The beaver and the robot thought about heat for a while. The first thing that came to Roz's mind was the sun. But then she remembered the hot sparks that she felt while sliding down the mountain peak. We could heat our lodge with fire, she said. Mr. Beaver blinked his little eyes. I will need to experiment, Roz continued, but I think there is a way. You go right ahead, Roz, said the beaver, but would you try not to burn down the entire forest? Do not worry, I will be careful. Let's move on, Mr. Beaver sighed. The next order of business is to find a site for your lodge. That meadow across the water would be perfect, but the hares will have a fit if we tried to build there. I think we should clear out some trees and build right in the forest, and I know just the place. The beaver took them along the water and up to a dense section of forest that jutted into the pond. It needs some work, said Mr. Beaver, trudging through the thick weeds, but this ought to do the job. Yes, this ought to do the job, said Roz in her friendliest voice. Job, said Bright Bill. Mr. Beaver was incredibly skilled at taking down trees, but even he couldn't keep up with Roz's powerful chopping hands. So he let the robot do the hard work. He pointed out the trees and shrubs that needed to go, and Roz started hacking away. By sunset, they were standing in a newly cleared site, and they had more than enough wood to build a lodge. You did some fine work today, Roz, Mr. Beaver yawned. I'll return in the morning, and we'll pick right off where we left off. What would you like me to do, said the robot. <clears throat> Tonight? So you still feel like working, do you? Very good. Well, you could start by digging out these tree stumps. And you can collect all those large flat stones over there. And you can keep and you can smooth down this patch of dirt so we have a level place to build. That should keep you busy. Next morning, Mr. Beaver returned to find that Roz had been very busy indeed. All the tree stumps had been dug up and their holes filled in with dirt. Twenty large stones had been stacked, and the ground was now perfectly level. But what astonished Mr. Beaver was that Roz and Brightbill were huddled around a small, crackling campfire. Mr. Beaver moved his lips, but no words came out. Brightbill was cold last night, said Roz, so I taught myself how to make a fire. But, but, but how? I discovered that when I strike these two stones together, they create sparks like this. I directed sparks onto dry leaves and wood until they ignited. Once I had a fire, it was easy to keep it going. And if I need to put it out, I could just add water. Mr. Beaver sat and warmed his paws. I've never seen fire in such a neat little bundle. He stared into the flames. I've only seen it blazing through the forest, burning everything in its path, but this is marvelous. He took another minute to enjoy the warmth. Then he and the robot got back to work. Mr. Beaver asked Roz to dig a trench here, to place large stones there, and arranged logs this way to smear mud that way. Birds and squirrels perched in trees and watched the new lodge take shape. It resembled the beaver lodge, but it was larger, a great dome of wood and mud and leaves. A simple opening in the wall served as the entrance, and the door was nothing more than a heavy stone that the robot could slide out of the way. Inside the lodge was one big round room. The arched ceiling was high enough that Roz could stand upright. A fire pit was set into the center of the floor and a mesh of thin branches above acted as a vent. Long stones lined the interior walls like benches and were covered with thick cushions of moss. There was even a hole for storing food and water for Brightville. You've got yourself a beautiful pond view property, said Mr. Beaver. What are you gonna name it? I do not understand why a beautiful lodge like this deserves a name. We call our lodge Streamcatcher. The robot's computer brain didn't take long. This lodge is for Brightbill. Brightbill is a bird. Birds live in nests. Could we call this lodge The Nest? Ooza! squeaked the beaver. The nest is a fine name for your lodge. Nest, nest, laughed Brightbill. They stood outside the nest and admired their handiwork until Mr. Beaver's belly began to grumble. That sound means it's time for me to get dinner. Thank you very much for your help, said Roz. We could, have not, we could not have done this without you. 
You're quite welcome, said Mr. Beaver, smiling. For your garden, you'll want to speak with Tawny, the doe who lives over the hill. She'll know what to do. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have to hurry home before Paddler eats all the best leaves. Enjoy your first night in the nest. Chapter 31, The First Night. The stars were out. A fire was crackling in the fire pit. Roz and Brightbill were settling into their first night in their new home. This lodge is where we will live from now on. The robot plucked her son from his little wooden nest and placed him on the floor. I hope you like it. The gosling did like it. He liked that it was big and warm and peaceful, and he liked knowing that the forest and the pond were just outside. He waddled around, peeping to himself and exploring every little corner of the lodge until it was time for bed. His mother carefully laid him on a soft cushion of moss, but he didn't want to sleep there. So she put him back in his little nest, but he didn't want to sleep there either. Bright Bill looked up and said, Mama, sit. Roz sat down. Then he said, Mama, hold. Roz held him. The robot's body may have been hard and mechanical, but it was also strong and safe. The gosling felt loved. His eyes winked closed, and he spent the whole night quietly sleeping in his mother's arms. Chapter 32, The Deer. The deer family did not run from the sound of snapping twigs and crunching leaves. They'd heard all about Roz and Brightbill, and they knew there was nothing to fear. Crown Point stood before his doe and his three spotted fawns, and the family watched as the robot approached with the gosling on her shoulder. Hello, dear. My name is Roz, and this is Brightbill. We are looking for a doe called Tawny. Crown Point moved aside, and the doe silently stepped forward. Mr. Beaver helped us build a lodge, said Roz, and he thought you might help us grow a garden. Mr. Beaver helped you, came Tawny's gentle voice. You must have done something for the beavers. I brought them freshly cut trees, said Roz. Tawny looked at Crown Point and the buck slowly nodded. I will help you grow a garden, said the doe to the robot, if you will let my family eat from it. The robot nodded in agreement and then quietly led Tawny back to the nest. Chapter 33, The Garden. After inspecting the grounds, Tawny asked Roz to remove all the dried brambles and weeds and leaves from the garden area. She asked her burrowing friends, the moles and the groundhogs, to dig through the dirt and loosen the soil. And then she asked all the neighbors to do something rather peculiar, Please leave your droppings around the nest. The more droppings, the richer the soil and the healthier the garden. As you can imagine, Tawny's request got everyone's attention. The place was soon crawling with woodland creatures, curious to hear more about the garden project. And just like that, the robot was meeting her neighbors. The plan to help her make friends was already starting to work. There was a festive feeling around the nest that day. Animals were coming and going and chatting and laughing, and for some pleasant conversation, each neighbor would choose their spot, leave their droppings, and be on their way, and always with a smile. We're happy to help, said two smiling weasels after finish, finishing up their business. It was our pleasure, said a flock of smiling sparrows before they flew away. But I shouldn't be much longer now, said a smiling turtle, as he slowly made his contribution. As all this was going on, Roz walked around and thanked everyone. I am not capable of defecating, she explained, so your droppings are most appreciated. Once the ground was fertilized, it was time for the plants. Tawny brought Roz and Brightbill out to a lush meadow. The robot sank her fingers into the ground and felt, spongy, felt the spongy layer of roots below the grass. Slowly, carefully, she rolled up wide strips of sod, exposing the dark, wormy soil. She carried the rolls back to the nest and spread them out to make a patchy lawn. Then she transplanted clumps of wildflowers and clovers and berries and shrubs and herbs until the nest was surrounded 
by a scraggly collection of plants. It's not much to look at now, said Tawny, but the grass will grow into these, ga into these gaps and the flowers and bushes should perk up in a few days. I'll, I'll return soon to make sure it's all rooting. Before long, this will be a lovely wild garden. And that's the end of chapter 33 and the end of our reading for today. Let's take a look at today's writing assignment. Chapters 29 through 33. <clears throat> Why did Roz name the new lodge the nest? The beavers named their lodge Streamcatcher. Why? What name would you give to your house? Write about it. Uh, give some reasons for why you think that might be a good name. Think of some things that are important to your family. And uh, yeah. The challenge question today, Tawny helped Roz and Brightville start a garden. It's spring. Plant a seed in soil, put it in the sun, water it, and watch it grow. Make a picture journal of your plant as it grows. Or pick a plant outside where you live. Draw a picture of it every few days and label the changes. And when I say pick a plant, I mean choose one to observe. Um, again, the challenge um, activities are optional. And this sounds like a fun one. Though. Might be something you want to try if you can. All right, until next time.